Good day, folks. How is ya? Nice to see ya. I gotta admit that this is one of those days where I haven't stopped again. And it's stacked up on me. And I'm loving it. Uh, make no mistake about it. Thunderfoot put out a video and he equated the iodine 131 with uh, kelp forest? With kelp itself. Because kelp got iodine in it. <laughs> I have to comment that uh, E equals MC square has, has nothing to do with, doesn't mention bananas or kelp. It won't work. That wasn't in the formula, so why is he using it? And it's really something else to see that people, but I'm going to do an entire hour tomorrow night. And uh, see? After 90 shows, I finally started the show by talking instead of looking at the screen waiting and wondering. And I'm wondering now. Here it goes. Hang on. There you go. Life is good. A little bit quicker tonight. So uh, iodine 139 can't exist without iodine 129. But iodine 131 rather turns to iodine-132 right away, but for every three iodine-131s, there's an iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life times 10. Because as it breaks down radioactively into other isotopes and decays and everything else, and halves and halves and halves, right? Um, and so Thunderfoot, would have, and his O's are zeros, the numeral zero, instead of a typical O. Uh, so it's an absolute, uh, and then they got a straw man there of a map of the tsunami, the height wave as it spread out through the South Pacific Ocean. And that's a Roy Dawson routine that we tore apart. And so we'll have to tear him apart tomorrow night. That's the second time. It's heartbreaking. And it's hard to believe someone like that could actually uh, feed themselves and tie their own shoes. I don't know how he gets out of bed. I don't know how he made that video. I can't imagine. He must have struggled with that for weeks uh, because you can't be that stupid and also be able to make, you know, do things, other things easy. You can't have just that one side of disability. What an arrogant person. I'm going to save it for tomorrow night. It's actually really heartbreaking. It's a little tiny bit depressing that somebody would do something like that and would tell all their followers who think that they're got their best interest in mind something like that. That's uh, unbelievable, irresponsible. And it it's, uh, needs a answer. And I'll be firing a shot across his bow tomorrow late. And Steve Meyer uh, found a 56-minute interview. I've been working on it all day. Uh, I'll just touch on it right now. Uh, there's been a lot going on, eh? Crazy. Just give me one second. Where is it to? Sometimes I'm, when you disconnect the projector, everything moves over around on your desktop. My desktop is so full of stuff, all the files. Ken Busser, B-U-S-S-L-E-R. Steve left some links there. I'm going to do, um, I got part one and part two of it done. And I hunted down everything they were talking about. And I done 131 again, right? And they say eight days. And I'm going to say that one for the video too. Uh, I got them torn apart. I'm going to destroy them. I dug up their other stuff. I dug up their history, their Twitters, their Facebooks, everything. It's been a very long day. Uh, because I got, I got, I ran into these guys a few times already, and I just got to put a stop to it. It's the same thing with Thunderfoot. I got to come out and whop it so I can move on. Right? It's not like I fix the 80 on it. I just need to do a video, come out, and make sure other people, everybody gets another narrative, a correct one. And... I can move on to the next one. And so there's a lot of really good stuff going on. Oh, you guys, is, you're going to love what's going to be happening over the next few weeks and forever after that. And like I say, it's no good for me to do this, to do it halfway or medium way or even, you know, just to dabble at it. That's hopeless to do something like that. I can't do it anyway. I'm at this 24-7 every waking moment. Uh, and that's okay. And so I got, but I got to get serious about what I'm doing. I got to produce quality stuff. I'm gonna have to give up the swearing for a lot of stuff, and 
stuff like that anyway. So iodine 131 once again can't exist without iodine 129. So 20 million Beckwell's disintegrations per second per liter of water in California. The next liter that fell down there is another 20 million Beckwell's. 15 million Beckwell's are iodine 131 and they got a life of around eight days but it's actually that's when they start to decay so it's actually times 10 eight days times 10 80 days but it turns into iodine 131 and you ingest that into your thyroid nine times more effectively but one quarter of them are iodine 129 and so they don't just like get in your soil and disappear that they got a 15 million year half-life and that's why you see iodine 131 in all the media they don't want to mention iodine 132 because it irradiates you. So if you're in an area where there's high, and we've done videos about that, the rain out of the high numbers of iodine, right across America, North America, we got all the models and the studies of how this dispersed. I mean, none of this is an illusion or debatable anymore. 20, um, 40 million Beckwells in kelp forests off California, 1,500 uh, radioactive atoms per cubic meter and 20 million Beckwells per liter per liter is nothing so the whole city is raining Beckwells can you imagine so you take how much do, you know like say a square meter you can get a, a liter in a pretty quick and heavy rains and so now when you talk about a square meter of Beckwells you're into the hundreds of millions of Beckwells so that means a quarter of that is going to be iodine and this is where it gets really interesting it's going to be iodine 129 so 20 million Beckwells is 5 million Beckwells 5 million in a liter that's not going to go away for millions of years and you know there's so many people out there that we depend upon that got the education and we funded their researches for generations and they can't tell us something like I just told you that time how iodine is made three times by the nuclear fission and then there's an iodine 121 a uh, 29 but you can't have any you can't have any of them without plutonium and uranium like uranium 234 235 iodine didn't just all come over here and then the uranium and plutonium went somewhere else and we got lots of numbers of course they've mentioned cesium 137 well, you can't have cesium-137 unless you've got 30 times more strontium-90. And strontium-90 is extraordinarily the way it sequesters into your body, into your muscle, into your bones. And that's why there's a link below about the DCA, because that unplates your blood. And it doesn't hurt your natural cells, but it goes after the cancer cells. extraordinarily effective and reduces all tumors. And study after study in the link below backing it up uh, by 70% in the first three weeks and so I'm just like you know to watch that video before I come online which was a mistake for me I knew it was going to be stupid but that was terrible to equate uh, high radiation readings off California with natural iodine that's in the kelp I mean that's criminal that's truly criminal think about a school playground in California that gets uh, 20 million Beckwells per liter during the heavy fallout. Think about all the the peer review academic studies of the modeling of the dispersal from the aerosol from the jet streams and how that goes up into the troposphere and the ionosphere and it takes years for it to all rain out. Think about how a gram the size of the very tip of a dime produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. And like it's just Wow. And so taking back our, the world, you know, is easier now than it ever has been before. And they have to come out with fools like that. And so they'll get promoted up uh, because they publish and they p promote uh, criminal, criminal, uh, it's criminal to, to do that, to come out and every lie that it never happened. He's saying that it never even came out that is contained in the containments. He never even mentioned that all three, uh, one, two, and three reactors melted 100%. It's unbelievable with a couple of hundred thousand subscribers that people will do that. But it shows you, you know, how many people out there 
that are just can't wrap their mind around it and the importance of what we're doing and what we what we're trying to accomplish is just the information so everybody's got a fair chance to make up their own mind and there's links below there's so much information now after 90 days it's, I, I find it so hard to imagine that people like this exist but today that's two big names out there three all together uh, that are promoting this heavily and got an audience and influence and and they're so it's so arrogant to say something like that that's so criminal they should, you know if they had a degree they should lose their degree because it's so irresponsible it really is it's really upsetting that uh, people are murdering others for uh, ads on YouTube videos and you know they're selling books they're promoting that kind of ideology, I don't know what to say anymore outside of, I'll make a video, hopefully they apologize. I don't think I've ever seen that happening. But it's something now we can use all the time as an example of even though they're, they claim to be educated, claim to be articulate, they're as far, you couldn't get any further from the mark than what he done in that video. It's unbelievable that people like that truly do exist on this planet. And we're going to give them the fucking gears for it. Yeah, I know, Dana. I just went on and on and on because that's frightening that all through the mainstream media, every day, all day, all the reporting out there, the majority of it is iodine-131, and they never mention iodine-132, and they never mention the iodine-129. That's not irresponsible, is it? That's not criminal, is it? That's not really, you know, dropping the ball. That's not unforgivable. That 5 million beckles, forget about the 131, worry about the iodine 129. And you can't have either of them. It's not, iodine just doesn't fuck off over to Canada. Right? I just want to whack somebody so hard because they say that. I literally watch them say it and I want to smack them. It's frightening. How can anybody think like that and do that? And how can nobody call them out? You know, how can all the media do that to us? How can they fucking do it to us? How can the writers and the producers and the executives do that to us? And then claim it's got an eight day half life so it doesn't friggin' matter. How can they do that to us? How come they're not throttled and on their friggin' backs is beyond me? It's coming. They're going to put us to that. Because we won't be able to take it soon. California is a wasteland. Period. How can it not be a wasteland when you had MOX fuel, the number three reactor, is two million times worse. That that went straight up into the jet stream at 100 miles per hour. It only at 24 hours is 2,400 miles. It takes uh, like three days to reach most of North America. 72 hours. That's insanity that these models are well known. I have to go and look up Fukushima plume models, Fukushima aerosol plume models, and you'll find peer review study after peer review study from around the world of how that works towards Fukushima. But they only talk about iodine-131 or cesium-137. Uh, so they don't talk about iodine 137 you can not have cesium without 30 times, 30 times more strontium and you see in the headlines where they're worried about the strontium getting out of the tanks when the new york times look it up 600,000 600 tons a day pouring into the ocean but that's going over the hot coriums that are melted through the containments like it's unbelievable that people are this naive and that uh, a glass of salt water has around 70 to 100 million uh, phytoplanktons, micro insects in it, and they create oxygen. They're the very food of the ocean. Now, there's, there's a lot more animals in that, so there's, you know, billions in a in a small glass of sea creatures. And if you dropped an isotope, if you dropped kelp in there, it wouldn't hurt nothing. If you dropped a banana in there, it can't hurt nothing. If you dropped a single isotope of 131 in there, it'll kill them all long before it reached the first half-life. 
and you can drop, you know, in a few hours, you can drop, because it's such a weak isotope, but it'll still kill everything in that glass. You know, hundreds of millions of creatures will be dead. And that isotope, if it was uranium-234, 235, you can fill that glass up, take the isotope, drop it in there, take the isotope out, fill the glass back up. Each time, they'll all be dead in zero time. Within an hour or two, you can kill the whole ocean with an isotope that lasts for 4.5 billion years if you can work it out to get the fresh glass of water and drop that isotope back in. That's probably one ten thousand of a millionth of a meter. So, what happens when you have 4% of the ocean is radioactive with plutonium, strontium, uraniums, and their daughters, why would he even name this stuff after daughters? Their licensing at a nuclear facility says they're supposed to put it in a container, a sarcophagus, and they bury it in the grounds and throw it in the ocean. And But California, I mean, this got, because it's right under the jet stream, it, all the modeling from all the studies, all the academic studies that are available, mind you, Elsevier got 3,900 studies about Fukushima that you paid for, that your loved ones produced, that your institutions uh, gave free copyright to Elsevier, Springer and Wiley, but uh, Elsevier alone had 3,900 there of Fukushima that were locked away, that I needed to pay 60 bucks to thousands of dollars to read. And so, you know, I got to go looking at Fox News for my information. I got to look at uh, stuff like that. I can't do that. And so you will find a lot of these articles and a lot of these stories and a lot of these studies that are available and are, are using popular models and correct models and are peer review and academically sound. And you show it to these people and they don't want to see that. They don't want to know about that. How is that possible? Because they can't make money knowing the truth. They can only make money uh, by being really stupid. And so they seek out people like Thunder Food. Uh, and he gets a bit of attention and he makes videos that he thinks probably are innocuous and harmless but are very harmful. To deny people the chance to get out of the way is the cruelest possible act one can perpetrate against another. It's, uh, and so, you know, tonight it kind of might seem like I'm calling him out. This is nothing. Wait till you see what I got planned for that one tomorrow night. It's brutal that uh, I didn't do this. I should have done this the last time, and that's probably why I'm, I'm pissed off, because I, I, I should have straightened him out the last time. And so I apologize for not doing that to the victims out there that he's creating, that uh, got their fate put into him. I'll try to correct that tomorrow night, because that's necessary. And how can anybody in the world do it? I don't know, you know, I don't know where to, they got no, they know different. Ken Boozler, he knows different. The guy from Canada, what the hell was his name? Wait right now. I got Ken's folder, and he's Woodhull's Oceanographic, and I just want to touch on it, if I can find it. Baby Fukushima, I got, uh, let me see, radioactive fallout, UC Berkeley, SL1 nuclear, Fukushima peer reviews, ban rainwater, D news, I don't know. And but when I plug back in the projector, all my folders will go back in their correct spots. I just got so much, I gotta clean off the desktop when I finish these projects, but I can't do that until, because <laughs> you got so many things in the movie maker. Thank goodness for two screens, you know. But then I'll have it all back to a clean desktop. I know I digressed that time. Hi, right, everybody. The biggest problem that we got, and while I'm on it, let's go down the road of... Where the hell did that go? Sorry, folks. I'll get it. Because that's what I'm doing. Here you go. I got it. You know, when you hear numbers like 20 million beckles a liter... You know, you should lock yourselves up in your home. And when the rain stops, uh, do what they done in Russia, where they evacuated 7,500 communities because it's radioactive for a lot. They, they only talked about cesium down there, too, because but they know the uranium is in the ground and everything else, and that's why they got rid of those 7,500 communities. 
Dave, Dave mentioned it back then, but we don't hear about it now, that's all. And uh, you can't have cesium-131 or iodine-131 without having the uranium, the 234, 235, that were atomized because there was four detonations. Well, three detonations. Number two didn't detonate, it melted down, but there was an explosion. So it is not, but not not like where they blew everything apart in one and three. Now they're completely gone. Four um, was demolished, and they fabricated the interior shots of it last month. BBC and ABC and all the big media went into the building. They claimed and showed us pictures, in, uh, video, video inside the reporters themselves, and try to pass it off as the official pictures from the outside is ludicrous. And I made a video a couple nights back, a 24 seconds long to destroy that. Not everything. So 50 Beckwells, um, a background radiation of man-made radiation of cesium-131, not kelp, that has potassium-40, which is nothing. You can fill this house up with potassium, and it is already, with potassium-40. And your body, as you know, um, as you take on radiation, your body equalizes that with the natural potassium in your body. And that's a pretty important thing, too, because potassium is engineered out of all the GMO food. So is the magnesium, so is the calcium, so is the iron, and so is all the nutrition. Uh, but back to where I was going to go was that your body has natural radiation, everything on the planet, it's, it's potassium-40, and it's at seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 uh, Beckwells. But these are insignificant, normal... That has nothing to do with E equals MC square. But there, that's what they try to do all the time is equate those Beckwells to potassium 40, which is, you know, unless you had no potassium in your body, it can't affect you. But even then, it's such a low level, insignificant, you can't even calibrate a uh, Geiger counter to it. In fact, that's basically what they are calibrated to, just a little tiny bit more concentrated where there's less potassium and there's a little bit more background radiation there is the 238 which is kind of odd because uranium 238 is also um, it's weaponized yellow cake that's what's left over from the production so whenever you hear someone saying natural uranium 238 and you do and, and you'll probably hear that tomorrow in the video with Boosler because he talks about that Ken Boosler from Wood, Woods Hole well if I had a cup of 238 here, I would die before I finish that sentence. I can put that cup of 238 in a restaurant, it'll kill everybody in the restaurant inside of an hour, even if they just walked in and left, they would die an hour later. And that would go on for 4.5 billion years times 10, because of the way it decays, right? And so, what Thunderfoot done, and what the Woods Hole is doing, Ken Boesler, and the Canadian from the University of Victoria. And I'll be putting that video out uh, tomorrow because I got half of it done. I got the hard stuff done. I got everything in folders. Everything is good. And um, that's going to be a really powerful video because, once again, we got them with the outrageous lies and uh, fabrications and misrepresentations. But I got their history. They're actually trained. And so I'm going to say that for tomorrow because that's really cool stuff coming up. Uh, but but I did skip over that part about iodine in the ocean and a single isotope. I wanted to touch up on that. I forgot to also mention that if you took a uranium or say cesium with a 300 year half life isotope. Now uh, seawater folks, because I went down that road, I'm going to mention it. Is I can take a bath every day in seawater can't give me cancer. But if you put uranium-234, 235, which is the weaponized isotopes that came over in the jet streams, into the equation, um, they're not going to get your body back. And if they did, it's got to go to a nuclear dump right away and it would align with the ambulance that took you there. <coughs> Hi, Mickey. Aqua. Dr. Goodhart. Uh, four winds. 
So back to that folder that I had up there that I wanted to share with everybody. We got models based upon six years of later after a small release into the Pacific Ocean. And because um, radiation doesn't dilute, right? It disperses. There's a big difference. And every so as it disperses, it leaves no oxygen behind it. The phytoplankton are, are popped like popcorn by this extraordinarily uh, endless energy is the only way. Like a beck wall is equivalent to flipping over a grain of sand in this type. But in potassium-40, normal background radiation is not like that. But in man-made isotopes, that's the kind of energy it got. And that's what makes it so dangerous because if you sequester one of those in your body, they're, they're putting out all this energy, they're killing all the cells around it, and then it becomes a tumor, becomes right the issue. And so in Seattle, in March and April, everybody was breathing at least 10 hot particles a day and ingesting that. You don't just like ingest it and it comes back out because uh, these are meant to go through the liners of your lungs. Uh, and so they, they, they get settled away really quick in the places and into the strangest places. They can get in your, the smaller ones, like, um, you know, so dangerous. And that's why we're seeing an acceleration of cancer. And that's why we're seeing a focus on uh, cancer treatments. There's, uh, there's no money in cures and they don't want to cure you. They want you to die hard, liquidate all your assets. And then uh, the goblins out there can, you know, like Thunderfoot can gobble up the assets because uh, that's what they're best at is cannibalizing the weak, going after the most vulnerable and why they feel like they're superior, why like they're, uh, I mean, 40 million becquels of iodine in a single bed of kelp in Southern California. And that was, um, hang on, it pops up here. And that was environmental science and technology, uh, Stephen L. Manley and Christopher G. Lowell. And that was a study, right? Thir uh, Japan still has 30 million tons of waste in Fukushima alone that is uh, radioactive. 30 million, just they're burning that, right? But there was a study done by um, U.S. researchers produced 11 of 1,500 atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter of cubic meter was detected in the California ear. Did I get booted off that time? My back. That's kind of funny. That don't happen very often. I got a dedicated line that's secure. No one's in on my line. All right, Doc comes down and check here. Hang on. No. Everything's running good. Don't talk about California radiation, Dana. You ought to know better than that. I know, you're saying Dana crazy. I'm proud of it. Let me come back down. Make sure everything's working good. Hi, News Eye. Let me say hi to a few people. Zoe snoring. Hi, News Eye. 777, Mount Paul. Stacy Colfett. Mike. Aqua. Candace. Driver dude, Kurtzer, DC Baboos, Snoops. It's so criminal boys using kelp on that. Hi, Standing Foot. Uh, Sylvia. I just say hi to a few people. What have we got going on here? Twit from Uranus. Four Winds, Nuda. Uh, hang on. So, once again, let me remind everybody that iodine-131 can't exist without the nuclear uh, fission. And there's three iodine-131s made, then it's 129. The 129 has a 15 million year half-life. So 20 million falling in the rain. That didn't go away, okay? And the rain doesn't just fall by the liter. And so that's cumulative. So... Uh, one liter is 5 million of uh, iodine 129, the next liter is 10 million for the next 15 million years. And then when, a, you know, f a few minutes later, there's another liter in that square meter. That's another 5 million 
So that's 15 million accumulative that's not going away for 15 million years. But does it only rain for a few minutes in California or something? Is that why there's a drought down there? They don't want the evaporation pulling it back out of the ground, reliberating all of that stuff? Most likely. They didn't want to mix the water. They want to use the water up and let everybody drink it and use it, poison them. People will be abandoning California and never be able to track the cancers. anti fracking Okay. Um, I try, you got kicked off. It happens. Google's shitheads. I try, Ed. Yeah. Miss Frill. DZ. Albert. Hi, Tracy. Um, I'm going to have a dot .org, Tracy, um, in about two weeks. Probably less, hopefully. And so Facebook will hang off till then and I'll think things out because that might be a great idea. Uh, but I don't want to do it in this name here. I want to do it in... Um, and I can't say the name because somebody might go out and steal it on me, right? But I got a couple of names picked out in case one's stolen, but I still don't want to. Hi, Sam Smith. Hi, Amthurst. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say hi to a few people because I didn't do enough of that lately. Hi, Ben. Okay, good stuff. That's what I was looking to double check. Let me keep going. I seen uh, Rad Chick was here earlier. Rad Chick. And you'll find links below to her, folks. Dana loves her. She's sweet. Extraordinarily talented. Unimaginably charming. Witty. Uh, educated beyond imagination. Extraordinary soul. Uh, Definitely a lighthouse in the fog for everybody. And you couldn't ask for anybody to try any harder. So I don't want to forget that. Hi, Gary. Hi, Chris. Trulop. Kathy Reed. I just say hi for a few minutes. David. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How did I miss that? I wonder. You gotta be pretty good sometimes with these friggin'. Just trying to catch any names I didn't say hi to. Baby Mama. Uh huh. BC Liberal Follies. I'm getting pretty good now, huh? Hang on. Diver Dude. Whoa, come on, Dana. You can find at least a couple more people I didn't say hi to. Jim. Hands. Jim Han. Just passing through. There you go. Ah, another good point. Get like that. Albert, Dominoes, Atom, Green Tea. That's pretty good. Mickey, Haha, <laughs> Christopher, Mike, Stacy. I got some good names in that time. Just let me catch up. Uh, Pam, Rabbi, Burrito, Mr. Hemi. Fukushima Revelations, Pam Hawkins, New the Way, Sam Smith. Okay, I just got pushed off the pages. <laughs> you guys are good. Unbelievably cool. All right, so let me go back in to La La Land here. Let me recite this again. 20 million becquerels of iodine 131 in the rain in California. Uh, where the hell did that hill on go? 40 million becquerels of iodine, 131 in a single bed of kelp off Southern California. The amount was most likely larger. March the 30th, 2012. Environmental Science and Technologies. I went down that road for you. And 50 becquerels, I went down this one. Is there a reversible human organ damage? So what's 50 million going to do or 40 million going to do? But, you know, one quarter of it is iodine-129. It's sickening. Uh, in a single couple of beds. Let me keep going. On April the 15th, the forecast showed a radioactive cloud stretching from Texas to Canada. Right? 
And we got all the people that in the academic world that are supposed to be doing their job. And that's why I can't trust them. That's why nobody can trust them anymore. And they just lied to us and hide it away. But that, that was the Norwegian Institute for Ear Research showing it. Norwegians were showing it. Japan created 5,000 plumes models in the first 52 days because there was nothing going on. Right. That's why they hid it away because there was nothing to see. Right. Of course, Dana. There's another study, Norwegian Institute for Ear Research, NILU, April 15, 2011. Uh, showed the forecast of a plume, a radioactive plume from the jet streams. Uh, forecast maps from Swedish uh, Meteorological Bureau. September 7, 2011. Uh, the particles were traveling across the Pacific in your jet streams. California nuke plant detected 4,000% more iodine-131 than UC Berkeley did during Fukushima peak. So they didn't have any broken reactors at that plant. They were, they were implying that that was coming from Fukushima. And that was Diablo Canyon. Now, the Americans got uh, quite a lot going on there. But whenever you hear these guys talking, I always got to remember Hanford dumped over 450 billion gallons into the soil, not dropping barrels on it, but dumping it out of the barrels into the soil, releasing it from the tanks directly into the soil in the 50s and 60s. And they got 41 miles of open trench down there. And so the lies are just so numerous, and all uh, university professors, by definition, are lobbyists. You can't get in there and buck the system. You can't get in there. And, you probably can if you're from a certain family or it's a, you're a specialist in your field and you're brilliant and they just want to use you and indoctrinate you and get at your students and indoctrinate them. Maybe there's a good scientist, but uh, he's, his uh, colleagues are all scumbag lobbyists and can't be trusted. And you got to keep them, hold their feet to the fire and everything they says, you got to go and look it up and make sure they're actually telling you the fucking truth. And I'm going to cover that tomorrow. Um, Canada suspends mobile radiation measurements around Vancouver, BBC, BBC, until further notice of radioactive clouds loom. April the 4th, 2011, right? They turned them down enough here in Canada. And I'm doing it that way so people can go look it up. That was Health Canada. Nuclear emergency response site showed they turned it off in Saanich Peninsula, Victoria, Vancouver in March the 24th. Uh, Haida Gwaii, the Queen Charlotte's uh, broken ass island there. Uh, March the 24th was turned off. And around Vancouver, the mobile ones were all turned off. And Saanich was March the 22nd. And Victoria was March the 22nd. They turned off the radiation detectors, right, 11 days later. But you remember what happened on the 19th and the 20th, and there's a peer review study, I'm sorry, there's a Health Canada story that came out, and it's a PDF for the computer, so be careful. And it's below, but it's well worth your time to look at. They went out with a plane here and found a radioactive plume right from the ceiling all the way down to the ocean for 19 hours and measured it and I got all of those uh, I got that study down below and the links to the, that original study and so we, we've talked about that a lot but you can never look at it enough if you don't know what's going on that's so important because they let children walk to school that day with all that hot particles coming through their communities these were hot particles you know your government turned their backs on you and then the people in the alternative media, like Thunderfoot, that you turn to, stabs you to death because uh, he marginalizes and ridicules, makes fun of it, and finds straw men to use to come out and demonize uh, the true facts and the horror of this. And so how can you deal with it if you don't know what's going on, if you don't have an opportunity? I mean, they should take... Uh, 
they should take Thunderfoot and dress him up like a homeless guy and throw him down there on the streets in Tokyo and the old Yakuza's will have him out there at Fukushima working in no time. <laughs> we got fundraisers for his cancers. The people that went into Chernobyl, like the homeless that went into Fukushima, were up against an incredible monster. The ones that went into Chernobyl, there were 600,000 soldiers because Gorbachev mobilized the military. 600,000 soldiers got medals, and a lot of them got medals for running out on the roof for 15 to 20 seconds and then going home and never going on a nuclear site again. 15 or 20 seconds. And they had a dose of a lifetime. And a lot of them died of cancer because they were running on 8,000 to 12,000 Rankins on Moshe on, on uh, Chernobyl, which was one third of size of uh, any of the reactors at Fukushima, which was only a 30% meltdown on top of that. So that makes it nine times bigger than, uh, t you know, number one reactor was nine times bigger than Chernobyl. But Chernobyl was graphite. This stuff over here in Fukushima is uranium, enriched uranium, weaponized from, milled down from missiles left over from the Cold War, uranium and plutonium. Right, so it's it's a weaponized, they're trying to make weaponized isotopes for directed energy weapons. And uh, it's really something else that, that we don't need those isotopes for nuclear energy. And they are the isotopes that makes all the pollution. They're the ones that are creating the massive amounts of uranium-238. And they're firing 5.5 million rounds a month in Iraq. 5.5 million rounds for nine years. Uh, Department of Defense website, you go look it up, 5.5 million rounds a month in Iraq and you'll find all the uh, the government's site and go and read that stuff and half of that came from McAllister's bomb manufacturing facilities where they only make depleted uranium rounds um, and so 2.25 million rounds a month uh, 20 train car loads were depleted uranium, dull ram, uranium-238. These were dirty bombs. They're dirty bombs. If you took one of those bullets and they fired them at a rifles, uh, the A-10 Warthog shoots the 30 millimeters and the big um, the big ones, which is uh, 10 pounds of solid 238. And so if I had a piece that big and I passed it to somebody and they passed it to somebody and went around the world like that, you would kill everybody on the planet of... Um, because it's putting out x-rays and it's changed. It's changed its property the minute it went through the chain reaction it became two million times more dangerous. And so that's why the MOX fuel is so bizarre, so strange and so phenomenally dangerous, so toxic. Uh, it should never be on planet Earth. Much like uh, the Philippines, what happened to the Philippines should never have happened on Earth. The typical tornado is only quarter mile wide F4, ferocious, would be a quarter mile wide and would last 30 seconds over your head and maybe would go at top six miles. Well, what hit the Philippines was 100 miles wide, was an F4 tornado, 195 sustained, 235 mile per hour uh, gust for four hours. So it took up 44 provinces. And there's a link below about that that I put together so people can understand it. And there's another link below uh, explaining all of Fukushima's in basic detail for 22 minutes, including the ocean dispersion and the ear modeling from different institutions. Uh, that's really important. So you understand Unit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 with the original pictures, with the original everything. And there's links below to 2,136 uh, pictures from TEPCO and they're in 99 lots. You can download them as zip files, put them in another file, you can play with them a lot better. And there's also a link below to the FOIA releases where there's millions of the exchanges and the annotations and the transcriptions from uh, the government itself. Uh, but a lot of it is redacted, but you can certainly read a lot into that. And you can marry them up to the pictures of the 2,136 pictures below. And I can't remember what that was, 1.7 gigabytes when you download it all. Uh, and so it's each uh, one of those folders are labeled. And so if anybody really wanted to look, we have them there every night, right? Me and the Hounds of Fukushima. 
who are unbelievable, dedicated people that I don't know how they can do. Like, I know I can wear down anybody out there, period. That's what I've done all my life. But how all of these people show up on my stream each night uh, is amazing. It truly is. And because they're not here to play games. They're not here for nonsense. They don't talk about nonsense. They're not... You know, we, all they want is to see an opportunity for the future of society. That's not asking very much under normal circumstances. Unfortunately, under these circumstances, it is asking very much. And we're all here together. And we're growing. And we're educating them. People to have a proper narrative, a proper dialogue, a proper response, and to get rid of the disinformation like bananas and uh, natural iodine and kelp which got nothing to do with the 40 million beckles of iodine-131, 132, uh, the 10 million, 129, which is not going to go anywhere. But your Geiger counter is going to pick up low background potassium-40, uh, insignificant, harmless uh, radiation. It got nothing to do with E equals MC squared. We'll never have anything to do with E equals MC squared. It should never have been in the conversation. And anybody that uses it is a fool or uh, lobbyists or they're being paid to produce that material and those types of people are monsters that's the monsters of our society you don't want to live on the same street as these people let alone the same community uh, they, they sold out their own humanity they sold out the one thing we all got and that no one can take away from you is your self-respect that's something they don't own they don't have and they shudder and hide away from people like us why they lash out and they don't reject us because they don't allow themselves to understand the implications of what their words means it's particularly to the people that have put their faith in them that's some serious bad karma coming back your way when you do stuff like that it's the equivalent of me getting out on the radio and saying the opposite of what I say you know and then you listening to it and saying holy shit I can't understand that. How, how is that even possible? To me, you know, it's such a betrayal that there are people like on, like that on the planet. And there's a lot of them. And the realization now is just shocking for me that, that it's all about something I would never understand, I guess. You know, to come out and do what I see happening. Not mention strontium is 30 times more wherever you see 137. Not mentioning that the cesium-137 forecast shows a near-surface radiation cloud over Texas and western USA on April 15th and 16th, published April 14th at uh, Project, the Institute for Environmental Research at the University of Cologne, April 14th, 2011, in Northern Hemisphere, near-surface cloud. It's invisible. You can't taste it. You can't smell it. You can't see it. You can't feel it, you can't hear it. Uh, but when you ingest it, you can never get it out of you. And it never starts producing energy. And to the most vulnerable of society who are closer to the ground, uh, you know, who's going to look out for them? Who's going to, you know, who's going to keep them out of that? Or try to. That's us. We're going to do our best. And then some, and then some. And we're going to dominate at some point. That's a fact. Because we have facts, we have rationality. And we have the right narrative, and we have uh, righteousness on our side. Right? We have uh, we we're obligated. We you know it's our obligation to uh, never stop and always to do it to succeed. Right? There's nothing can stop us. I know that. That's why I'm here every night. Because there is nothing. There's nothing. Can, they can't call me out. They can't come out and attack me. I can come out and attack them. I can come out and drop them on their heads over and over and over. I can do whatever I want to them, but they can't come back out and reciprocate. They can't come out and do it to me. Right? Because I'm right in their wrong, so they can't do it. But they can come out and give interviews and lie, but they can't come out and say, Dana, you're friggin' wrong. That, that'll never happen, because I don't do that. I'm just here to discuss the facts. Nice and simple. Um, not, I don't need to sugarcoat it, because I think everybody's smart enough to work it out on their own. I don't need to fabricate it, because you can't even make this stuff up. I don't need to exasperate it, I don't need no misdirection, misinformation, and I don't need to pretend uh, that if I close my eyes it's all going to be okay, because when I close my eyes that's when I truly understand 
uh, that is not. And uh, if I can't sleep, I better get up and look and learn and understand. Because it seems to me that if there's not at least somebody out there with a rational narrative to help everybody digest it, it's it's really it's really harmful. And I you know I had to search it out. I've been I had to flip from eight years of studying about uranium 238 and 234 235, but the uranium 238 because it's weaponized and used in other countries so much, and every building in Iraq. I mean, there's five million orphans in Afghanistan. There's 22 veterans committing suicide every day. There's 29,000 rapes reported in the military every year. If they're doing that to their own, what are they going to do to the occupied countries? There's millions of refugees, millions missing. Uh, there's a couple of million widows in Iraq. You know, like I say, five million orphans to get all of that to get 11,000 Taliban. Uh, and then they broke the bank doing it. And now there's 49 bases around Iran, but Iran's the threat. There's a notion that is whipping up storms, a tour apart the Philippines, tour apart Tonga, 178 mile an hour sustained, 100 mile wide F3 tornado. Nothing like it ever existed on this planet before. And that's from the isotopes being lifted up in the moisture, like 20 billion uh, million beckles of rainfall in California. Where do you think that came from? Picked up in the ocean, a lot of it. It re-picks up and redeposits it on the con continents. And so we have to learn to deal with it. Right? We have to come out and put our academics behind it without this game that there is a future for nuclear weapons. Because there's not. There's no need of nuclear power. If we were to take 4,800 peer-reviewed academic uh, studies that are produced every day and fund them to create solar panels, just one day there's 4,800 peer-reviewed, 1,000-page academic studies published and then locked away at Springer, Oily, or Wiley and Elsevier, and you pay for all that, and they get the copyrights to it. And so you'll never know. But if you were to open this up and have them actually do their job and solve some of the issues we got, and nuclear power plants are all privately funded, so the, the worst of the worst on the planet, the creepiest of the creepiest, the most destructive of destructive on this planet, are behind those personas that are privately funding these operations, but they're all military industrial complexes. That's what they're making these isotopes for. They have no benefit for society. They kill off all species on this planet with an unbelievable releases that we've had upon these planets. But this is catastrophic. We have three melted cores. Three friggin' melted cores. This is unprecedented. We don't have any little black book of what the long term, but we can understand it because we know how energy works, we know how radiation works, we know that iodine-131 is man-made dangerous isotope, but no one bothers telling you that it turns into 132, which is nine times worse, and that one quarter of it is always going to be 129, and you can't have it without the cesium, and there's always 30 times more in strontium-90, you can't have any of it without Uranium-234, 235s. You can't have any of it without the plutonium. 24 million uh, thousand year half-life for just a... But you got 238, 239, 240, 241 of plutoniums. But then you got... These were through the chain reaction already, so they're a couple of million times even worse again. But it's because of that combination of taking military weapons, refining them, and then putting them in and trying to create these wicked isotopes that shouldn't be on this planet, that have no right to be on this planet, that they have to hide away behind the illusions of an eight-day isotope because they have to lie so you won't find out. And creepy fucking monsters like Thunderfoot got to come out and do the stuff that he's doing with a straw man map of tsunamis. When there's so He should have said, you know, well, here's some real maps. Here's some real studies. Instead, he just ma tried to make it look like everybody that even mentioned the word Fukushima, right? I mean, people like that are not really human. Don't consider them human. They're fair fucking game, okay? People like that shouldn't be allowed to drive or own electrical appliances. They're too fucking stupid. 
They're just too stupid. They're a danger to society. It should be like an island out there where we put the stupidest ones. Or the outright fabricators and lawyers and manipulators. Uh, these, uh, they have a short half-life as far as I'm concerned. Because when the population wakes up and realizes, because they're easy to find, because they were the idiots, the mouthpiece, the useful idiots, the throwaways, the disposable fucking dummies, they're going to be destroyed. Because this population is waking up and it's getting pissed off. We're okay because we kind of went through that stage. But wait till there's a mass awakening. It's underfoot. There won't be a place safe on the planet for useful, useless idiots like that. That's my opinion. I'm sticking with it. I say goodnight to everybody. Kind of went down to rant in a friggin' roll, which is okay. Um, and so many headlines I never got to, I won't get to. Hi, Albert. Good night, Albert. Good night, Four Winds. I'm really going to click off because I do that to you folks sometimes where I say I'm going to go and I stick around for another 15 or 20 fucking minutes and everybody's like, goodbye, Dana, and I'm still going. <laughs> no, I'm actually going because I just realized it's 55 minutes. So, Good show. Good good, good comments last night. <laughs> Some funny stuff there I'll get to later. But Albert, Four Winds, Troy... Won't let you watch Troy. That's terrible. Dr. Goodhart. Ben. They can't get in into the buildings for a couple of hundred years. They're, they blew up. There's pellets and rods. There's 122,000 rods missing there. Any of the rods, a piece this big, will kill everybody in a restaurant in an hour for 4.5 billion years. You can do the math. Hi, Earl. Nuda. Pet lovers. Yeah, we're moving ahead. In a couple of weeks, we'll have the studio up, running pretty good, and then it'll get better after that. I'll have the .org up. And so now we can really head out there. We'll have everything organized. We'll do the Facebook, the Twitters, and all kinds of fun stuff. Just, I think so. I think it's going to be really good. Something, something really uh, informative have spawned out of what we've done. And uh, it's, I think it's just uh, the natural progression. So I'll catch everybody after. Uh, David, Mickey, Sergeant, News Eye, Freelance Ryan, DC, Stacy, Checks and Balances, Aqua, JD Mason, Sergeant, Hemi, Bob, Tulp, Wright Dwayne, Lisa, Pam, James, yeah, there's all kinds. Aviator, it's good stuff, folks. It was a pretty good rent tonight. I think so. We were staying on target for most of it. If not all of it. I didn't get through one tenth of the headlines that I want to get through. That's okay. More for next time. <laughs> we're going to get them yet. Because we're the posse. We're the hounds of Fukushima. We get on your ass. You'll friggin' know it. Right, folks? When we come after somebody, they don't get away ever. Because now they have got our attention. That's not a very good fucking spot to be as far as I'm concerned. Don't want my attention. I'd like to see Thunderfoot come out and make a video about me. <laughs> I'd like to feed off of that for a week. Okay, folks, because you know how stupid that would be. But anyway, we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. And uh, if I'm up to the studio tomorrow, I'll bring my equipment with me. We'll give you a little short uh, hello live stream for a few minutes and just a little introduction maybe. So I'm not sure how tomorrow's going to go, but if I get there, I'll be bringing my gear. And I'll sign in, sign on. Take care. We'll see you folks tomorrow sometime for sure.